Today we're going to talk about unemployment taxes. So unemployment taxes are uh, it's a tax on the employer, usually not on the employee. We'll see a few times in some states where um, employees have to pay state unemployment taxes, but for the most part, um, unemployment taxes are a tax only on employers. So unemployment taxes are used to pay um, unemployment benefits to temporarily laid off workers, so workers that cannot find a job, okay? So um, there are two different types of unemployment taxes. There is the federal unemployment tax, or what we call FUDA, so that's, you're paying that to the federal government, and most of FUDA goes to pay administrative costs of the unemployment program. And then there's also state unemployment, or what we call SUDA, and SUDA is obviously paid to your state, so in Georgia, it'd be paid to the Georgia Department of Labor, and for SUDA tax is actually um, used to pay unemployment benefits to laid off workers. Okay, so let's talk about um, how much um, of employees pay is taxable each year. For FUDA, the wage base is 7000 So that means for every employee that an employer has, they have to pay FUDA tax on only the first 7000 that they pay each employee. So once an employee is paid 7001 that one extra dollar is not taxed for FUDA tax. Now for SUDA, the wage base caps at different amounts in each state. So if you look in your textbook on pages 512 and 513, you'll see this figure 51, and it shows you every state, and over here it will show you what the wage base is. So for Georgia, the amount of the wage base is 9,000, okay? Notice that the rate is from 0.04 to 8.1%, okay? So that rate is probably different for each employer, and I'll, and I'll um, explain why in just a little bit. But notice that our wage base uh, cap is at 9,000, okay? Look at California, and it looks like it's on everything, okay? There is no wage base cap. Look at Alaska, it's 36,900, okay? Uh, Idaho is uh, 34,800, okay? So you'll see that it is, oops, you've got every state on here and every state has a different cap. New York is 8,500, North Carolina 20,900. Okay, so it always um, changes. And notice that the rate is always different. Okay, there's a range instead of a specific rate. So for FUDA, there's always a specific rate. It's always, uh, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But for SUDA, I will always have to tell you what the rate is because it, it varies. And I'll, and I'll um, explain why it varies in just a minute. Okay. Oops. So our FUDA rate is really 6%, okay? So 6% on the first 7,000 of gross wages for each employee per year. Now, the federal government allows a credit against that 6%, and the most credit you can get is 5.4%, okay? So here's how you get that credit. You pay your state unemployment, your SUDA, in full and on time. Okay, if you do that, then you should be able to get the 5.4% credit for the most part. Okay, so therefore, if we have a 6% rate and we subtract out the 5.4% um, credit, then our FUDA rate is really 0.6%, or if you put that in your calculator, either way, 0.6% or 0.006. Okay the same thing. So most employers, if they're paying their SUDA tax on time and in full, they're only going to have to pay 0.6% on the first 7,000 of gross wages each year. All right, so let's talk about that credit. Okay, so again, to get the full 5.4% credit, you have to have made SUDA contributions on a timely basis, okay, and in full, all right. Um, 
Now, even if the employer pays everything on time, there's no way you can ever get more than 5.4% of a credit, okay? So even if you decide to pay more in than even what you owe, the most you can get is a 5.4% credit. So the least amount of food tax you can ever pay is 0.6%. Okay, we are going to assume that our employers pay um, their suit of tax on time and in full so that you can assume that the tax rate for FUDA for your problems is going to be our 0.6% on the first 7,000. Okay, there's one other way that cre your credit might not be a full 5.4%. Okay, um, and that is if you are in a state that is in default on what we call these Title 12 advances, okay? So some states, especially in the past couple years when there have been more unemployed people in these states, Georgia is one of them, they had to go to the federal government and actually ask them um, for a loan, okay? So that is what we call a Title 12 advance, when the state goes to the federal government and actually uh, asks the federal government for a loan so that they can pay out unemployment benefits to their, um, to their uh, unemployed workers, okay? So obviously this is a loan that the state has to, be, has to pay back with interest, okay? So if they have not paid it back, by the beginning of the second year after the advance, okay? So let's say that Georgia got an advance in 2011, okay? In 2012, they have a freebie, but they have to pay back the loan by the beginning of the year in 2013, or all of their employer's credit reductions, the 5.4% credit, is going to be reduced by 0.3%, okay? So therefore, instead of 0.6%, uh, in that year when they, when they haven't paid back their loans, then they would actually owe 0.9% because we'd add that 0.3 back on, okay? So Georgia is one of these states, okay? So let's see how um, this works. So basically what's going to happen is every year around November, okay, they're, you're going to find out, is my, did my state pay back their Title 12 advance or not, okay? So if they had an outstanding Title 12 advance, you'll find out in November if, you, um, if your state paid back the Title 12 advance, okay? So all year long, you're going through without knowing, okay? It might be in the news, all right? But... Um, but you really won't know until November if they've paid back the loan or not. Now, in Georgia, they went three years without paying back the loan. So in 2013, the, our actual credit reduction was 0.9%, okay? So therefore, everyone was actually paying 0.9 plus 0.6 is 1.5%, okay? So that's what everyone in 2013 was paying on for food for food attacks, okay? In 2014, I just happened to know that Georgia paid back all of their Title 12 advances. So our food attacks in 2014 is going to be back at 0.6%. So this was 2013, okay? So now they're, they're back to 0.6%, okay? So since people didn't know about um, whether the Title 12 advance was paid back until November, this extra 0.9% was a tax that got kind of added on in the last quarter, okay? So all year long they're going by as if they're paying 0.6%, and then in the last quarter they find out, oh, my state didn't pay back their Title 12 advance, so now I owe an extra 0.9%. So this was something that was paid in the, um, in usually in the last quarter, okay? So as I said before, each state has a different, or each employer uh, in a state has a different rate than maybe their neighbor, 
Okay, and so basically how you know what your rate is, is the Georgia Department of Labor is going to send you what your SUDA rate is. They'll, they usually send it in the um, fourth quarter before calendar year starts. So you know exactly what your rate is. Now obviously employers want a lower rate, okay, and so that rate is based on what we call an experience rating, okay, and so I'll talk about that in just a few minutes, okay. So, um, so obviously, if your experience is better, then your rate's going to be lower. If your experience is worse, then your rate's going to be higher, okay? Um, when you're a new employer, you're going to have a specific rate. I think right now the, uh, the new employer rate is 2.62%, okay? Um, and I'm going to talk about this reserve ratio formula um, in just a second. And basically, you'll see how we might can lower um, our uh, rate by making more, con more contributions, okay? Um, one other thing is nonprofits have an option to reimburse the state for the actual amount of unemployment benefits paid instead of paying a percentage. So instead of nonprofits and some government workers, instead of paying 0.6% or a certain um, rate into SUDA, then what they will do is they will send their wage reports to the Georgia Department of Labor. And then if the Georgia Department of Labor ever has to um, send out uh, or pay unemployed workers, then the Georgia Department of Labor will actually invoice those nonprofits for the amount that they've had to pay out to unemployed folks, and then um, it's up to the nonprofit to pay that bill to the Georgia Department of Labor. So it's kind of, they're kind of paying on a pay-as-you-go. They're just reimbursing the Georgia Department of Labor for any, for any unemployment benefits. Again, that is only for nonprofits and some government employees, okay? So the SUDA Dumping Prevention Act is something else I want to talk about, and it basically mandates that state, states enact laws to stop businesses from lowering their unemployment rates through creating new entities. So what this does is if a um, company has a very high SUDA rate, they might be tempted to just um, fictitiously close that business and say that they opened up a new one, okay? So then they get back to that new rate, which is in 2014, 2.62%, which might be a lot lower if they were paying like 8% or something like that, okay? So basically, the SUDA Dumping Prevention Act prevents them from doing that. You can't just say that you're closing your business and open a new one, okay, just to get a lower SUDA rate, okay? Now, let's talk about that experience rating that, we, that I mentioned. So this is basically how um, SUDA rates are determined for employers. So there's this thing called a reserve ratio formula. So this reserve ratio formula. And what it does is you take the contributions into oops, contributions into unemployment, you subtract out any unemployment benefits that have had to been paid out to unemployed workers, and you divide by an average payroll, okay? And in doing this, basically your contributions, okay, are all the SUDA tax that you have paid, on time, hopefully, and in full. You subtract out any benefits that have had to been paid to unemployed workers, okay? And then you're gonna divide by your average payroll. If you have a large number, that would mean that your contributions were high and your benefits were low, right? If your contributions are high and your benefits paid are lower, then you're going to have a higher rate, right? Um, it's going to be a higher, more positive number, okay? So positive balance employers will experience a lower tax rate. This means the employer has built up a balance in the reserve, okay? take away those arrows. Now, if my contributions are lower, but my benefits paid have been higher, I'm talking about it here, I've got a negative, so that means I might have a negative balance here. And so negative balance employers will experience higher tax rates. So if we're looking here, 
for Georgia, notice that the best rate you can get is 0.04%, and the worst is 8.1%. So employers that have this positive balance, they might get, be getting closer to that 0.04%, whereas if you're a negative balance employer, you're going to have more of an 8.1%, okay? So that's, that's where this rate goes, and somebody in between is going to have a rate that's in between, okay? Now, what you can do is you can actually make voluntary contributions to your state fund, and so and when you do that, your contributions are going to go up, right, and compared to your benefits, and so maybe your reserve ratio will be more positive, and so therefore your rate will go down. Okay, so in Georgia, you can make voluntary contributions to hopefully get your rate down. Okay, um, also, I did say that this was an employee, um, a tax on employers. Okay, notice that some states do require employees to contribute to SUDA. So let's look back here. Look at Alaska, they make employees. So anything in this um, column is for where employees have to pay. So notice um, Alaska, they have to pay 0.66% on the first 36,900 of their own wages. So employees have to pay. There's not many states that do. California, uh, Hawaii, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, Rhode Island. Okay, so those are the states um, that where the employee has to pay as well as the employer. Okay, so let's look at a few problems. Okay, that's my last slide. Okay, so let's look at a few problems. So here I've got in September 2014, Manson Paint Corporation began operations in a state that requires new employers of one or more individuals to pay a state unemployment tax of 3.5% of the first 7,000 of wages paid to each employee. So here's my pseudo rate, 3.5%, and here's um, my cap, 7,000, the same as FUDA. An analysis of the company's payroll for the year shows total wages paid of 177,610. The salaries of the president and the vice president of the company were $20,000 and $15,000 respectively for the four-month period, but there were no other employees who received wages in excess of $7,000 for the four months. So the only people that had wages in excess of $7,000, meaning above the cap, were the president and the vice president, okay? Which all of those $20,000 and $15,000 are in this number. Okay. Included in the total wages were 900 paid to a director who only attended director meetings during the year, and 6,300 was paid to the factory superintendent, and 2,000 in employee contributions to a cafeteria plan made on a pre-tax basis for both federal and state. In addition to the total wages of 177610 a payment of 2430 was made to Anderson Accounting Company for an audit performed on the company's books in December 2014. Compute the net food tax and suit tax. Okay, so here we go. So we've got, we know that in total, our possible taxable wages are 177,610. Okay, so that's our possible taxable wages. But is that really our taxable wages for for right now? We've got we've got two employees that were paid more than 7,000. Okay, and notice that our suit wage base is 7,000 and our FUDA wage base is 7,000. So our, when we calculate our taxable wages, it's going to be the same for both SUDA and FUDA. So this includes some wages that are higher than 7,000. So let's track those. So we've got the president made 20,000, the vice president made 15,000. So we add those two together, that's 35,000. Now how much of that 35,000 should be taxable? It should be 7,000 for each, right? So 14,000. So I'm going to subtract out the 14,000, and that leaves me with 21,000 that is over my 7,000 cap. Okay? So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to subtract out that 21,000, because that is not taxable. Okay? Because it was over our cap. Now, let's look at what else we've got. We also have 900 paid to a, a a director who only attended board of director meetings. 
Um, boards, board of directors, anybody that sits on the board of directors is not taxable for anything, any kind of a uh, payroll tax. So we're going to subtract out that $900 because it's not taxable. Also included in there was a $6,300 paid to the factory superintendent. That's a normal wage and it's under the 7,000 cap. So all of that would be taxable. And then we've also got 2,000 in employee contributions to a cafeteria plan made on a pre-tax basis. If it's made on a pre-tax basis, that means it's not taxable. And notice that it's pre-tax for both federal and state. So that also needs to come out, okay? Also, in addition to the total wages, so separately, we've also got a payment of 2430 was made to Anderson Accounting Company for an audit it performed. Should that be included in the 177610? Probably not because this is some outside vendor. It's not they're not they're basically an independent contractor, okay? This is not an employee. So, it's not included in this number now and it should not be, okay? So let's figure out our taxable wages. 177,610 minus 21,000 minus 900 minus 2,000 gives me 153,710. Okay. Now let's figure out my our food tax. We're taking going to take this taxable wage number and multiply by 0 0.006 for our 0.6%, and that gives us 922. 26. So that's our FUDA. Okay. Let's calculate our SUDA. Because our FUDA and SUDA have the same cap of 7,000, this is also what would be taxable under SUDA. So 153,710. But we're going to use our SUDA rate, which is our 3.5%. So 153,710 times 3.5% or 0 0.035 is 537985. So that's how you would solve that problem. All right, let's look at number two. And this uh, worksheet is available in ANGEL, okay? In April of the current year, Freeman Steel Company transferred her porter from its factory in Nebraska to its plant in Ohio. The company's suited tax rates based on its experience ratings are 3.2% in Nebraska and 3.8% in Ohio. Both states base the tax on the first 9,000 of each employee's earnings. This year, Freeman Steel Company paid her porter wages of 20,900. 2,800 of those were paid in Nebraska and the remainder in Ohio. Compute the following. Okay, so here we've got um, he's, her porter is working for the same company, but he's working for them in two different states. Okay, so we're going to have to pay SUDA to two different states, some in Nebraska and some in Ohio. Okay, so he paid, he worked in Nebraska first. They paid him in Nebraska first. So first we're going to calculate his SUDA tax in Nebraska. So how much did he make in Nebraska? 2,800, which is below our 9,000 cap. So all of it is taxable. So 2,800 times, what's our rate, SUDA rate in Nebraska? 3.2%. So therefore we get 89.60. Okay. Now, then he goes and works in Ohio. Well, because he works for the same company, okay, he can offset what is taxable in Ohio by what they already paid him in Nebraska. So we've got, um, we're only taxable on the first 9,000, okay, and so he's already been paid 2,800 um, in Nebraska. So therefore, the only amount that would be taxable now would be, let's see, 9,000 minus 2,800 that he was already paid in Nebraska. So he's only taxed on 6,200 of his total wages in Ohio, okay? So therefore, we're going to take 6,200 times our Ohio rate, which is 3.8%. And so therefore, if you do the math, you get 235.60, okay? So again, in total, they because he works for the same company, in total, they only have to pay uh, suit tax on the first 9,000 of wages, okay? And it just happens to be the first 9,000 in both Nebraska and Ohio, so that was convenient, okay? So he only worked for $2,800 worth in Nebraska, so all of that was taxable. But then 
in Ohio, he worked more than that, right? Let's see how much he made in Ohio. 2,900 minus 2,800 in Nebraska. So 20,900 was his total. 2,800 of it he earned in Nebraska. So that means 18,100 is what he earned in Ohio. But only 6,200 of that is going to be taxable because we're, we're one, he never has to pay over 9000 but we already factored in 2800 of that from Nebraska. So 6200 times 3.8% is 23560. Okay? And then let's figure out his net food tax. Now, I'm throwing this in here. Ohio is a credit reduction state, so they've had a Title 12 advance, and it looks like they haven't paid it for two years. Okay? 0.3 plus 0.3. And so, therefore, let's figure out that. So we've got our the amount of taxable wages for that would be 7,000, okay? So 7,000 times 0 .006, so that's just his normal um, is 42, okay? So, and the reason why I knew it was 7,000, that's the normal cap. The most he was paid in the year was 20,900, and so therefore he's got to um, pay 0 .006 or 0.6 percent on the first 7,000. Now, also, he's in a credit reduction state, but only in Ohio. So the first 2,800 of this 7,000 was made in Nebraska, not in a credit reduction state. So how much of the 7,000 was made in a credit reduction state? We'll take the total um, 7,000 that's ever taxable. We'll subtract out what he made in Nebraska, and that gives us 4,200. So what we need to do is add on tax on this 4,200 that was made in Ohio. So we're going to take 4,200 times our 0 .006 for our credit reduction, and that gives us 2520. So therefore, my total tax is 42 plus 2520, or 6720. Okay. Let's do another problem. Here, during 2014, Jeff Smallwood worked for two different employers. Until So in my previous example, we worked for the same employer. Now we've got somebody that's working for two different employers. Until May, he worked for Roland Construction Company in Ames, Iowa, and earned $22,000. The state unemployment rate for Roland is 4.6%. He then changed jobs and worked for Ford Improvement Company in Topeka, Kansas, and earned $29,500 for the rest of the year. The state unemployment rate for Ford is 5.1%. Determine the unemployment taxes FUDA and SUDA that would be paid by Roland and then by Ford. Okay, so first let's just calculate FUDA. The FUDA part's easy, right? How much did he pay? How much did he get paid by Roland? 22000 So that's more than what's taxable. So the only amount that's taxable is the 7000 and we're going to multiply that by our 0.6% or 0 0.006, and so that's 42. We're going to assume that a, a, a state is not a Title 12 advanced state. Um, I will let you know if they are, okay? Now for SUDA, I gave you the rate, 4.6%, but I didn't give you the amount that's taxable. So what we'll need to do is come down to our state SUDA rates, and we're worried about Iowa. So let's come to our Iowa here. And it is, notice that the rates change. I already gave you that. But what we need to know is the 26000 Okay. So we're going to come here. So did, it, did he make 26000 No, he only made 22000 So, But all of it is under the cap. So 22000 times that rate that I told you, 4.6%. So that would be 1,012, okay? And then I've got Ford Improvement Company. For FUDA, how much did he make there? He made 29,500. So again, 7,000 times 0 .006 is 42. Again, I have to calculate FUDA again because I've got two different employers. Ford doesn't know what, he, what Roland paid him, okay? So they have to assume that they haven't paid anything. And so it's a new employer, so therefore new employer taxes, okay? And then our SUDA, let's see, now we're in Kansas. I already told you the 5.1% SUDA rate, but again, let's look here to find 
what is taxable. In Suda, um, for Kansas, it's on the first 8000 Okay, so let's come back here. How much did he get paid? 29500 but only 8000 of that is, is taxable for Suda in Kansas. So 8000 times my 5.1% rate gives me a total of 408. So for Suda, I always have to give you the rate, but I might not give you the cap. Okay, so you would have to go and look for the cap here on ex Exhibit 5.1, okay, on page 5.12 and 5.13. Okay, all right, let's look at another example. Here we've got during 2014, Jordan Company was subject to the Alaska State Unemployment Tax of 4.2%. So this is a company that's in Alaska. Here's their SUDA rate. The company's taxable wages for FUDA were 86,700 and for SUDA, 171,000. Compute the SUDA tax that Jordan Company would pay to the state of Alaska. So what's taxable for SUDA? The 171. And then what is our tax rate? 4.2%. So 171,000 times 4.2% is 7182, $7,182. Okay. Now let's look at our food attacks. So for food attacks, our taxable wages were 86,700 and our food attacks is always going to be 0.006. Okay. Unless I tell you something about a credit reduction, but but for the most part, it's always going to be 0.006 or 0.6%. Okay, so 520 and 20 cents. Now, remember, Alaska is a state where the employees have to pay SUDA. Okay, so let's look back and see how much. All right, so there, Alaska has to pay 0.66% on the first 36,900. Notice that our cap for the employee is the same as our cap for the employer. So that means whatever was taxable for the employer is also going to be taxable for the employees. Okay? But the rate is different. Our rate is just 0.66% for the employee. So let's go back here. I'm going to use whatever was taxable under SUDA here is also going to be taxable here because they have the same cap of that 39.6. But instead of 4.2%, I'm going to use 0.66%. And when you do the math, you should get $1,128.60. Okay? Got one more problem for us. So here we've got the partnership of Keenan and Cludlow paid the following wages during this year. Okay, so they've got, um, here's all of their wages for the whole year. In addition, the partnership owed 200 to Rudolph for work her, he, perf he performed during December. However, payment for this work will not be made until January of the following year. The state unemployment tax rate for the company is 2.95% on the first 9,000 of each employee's earnings. So what we're gonna do is compute FUDA and SUDA. Okay, so this is a partnership, and I'll go ahead and tell you, partners in a partnership, what they're getting here is more like a draw rather than wages. Okay, so a draw is not taxable for FUDA or SUDA. Okay, so if we're trying to calculate our FUDA taxable wages for Keenan and Cludlow, because they're partners, their taxable wages for FUDA and SUDA is zero. Okay, so before we can calculate our food tax and our suit tax, we got to figure out how much of these folks' wages are taxable. Okay, so again, for Keenan and Cludlow, zero taxable. Okay, for Perry, well, what's the taxable wage base for um, FUDA? 7000 So we just have to see, have they met their cap? If they have, then the full cap is, is taxable. So he's got 53,000, so 7,000 of that would be taxable. For Lee, he's a factory worker, 7,000 is taxable. For Roth, he's a factory worker, 7,000 is taxable. For Brock, he's a factory worker, he's been paid 6,900, so he hasn't met the cap yet, but all 6,900 would be taxable. For Ruiz, bookkeeper, already met the cap, so only 7,000 would be taxable. And Rudolph is in maintenance, he's been paid 5,100, he hasn't met the cap yet, so all of that would be taxable. Now let's 
quickly look back down here. In addition, the partnership owed 200 to Rudolph for work performed during December. However, payment will not be made until January of the following year. Well, you're only taxed once you have paid the wages. So in December, they haven't paid the wages. So we don't have to pay them. We're not going to pay them until January. So therefore, it would be taxable in the following year. So we don't have to worry about that $200. Okay. So if you do the math here to calculate how much is taxable, you should get 40000 So therefore, under FUDA, we've got 40000 that's taxable. Our tax rate always for FUDA is 0.6% or 0 0.006. So you do the math, you get 240 Okay. Now let's calculate what is taxable for SUDA. So our tax rate for SUDA is 2.95%, and notice that it's on the first 9,000 of each employee's earnings. So our FUDA tax uh, wage base is different than our SUDA taxable wage base. So again, our partners, nothing is taxable because they're partners, but for SUDA, I've got a 9,000 wage base. So in Perry's already met that. So therefore, 9,000 of his pay is taxable. Uh, T. Lee already met the cap, so 9,000 is taxable. Roth already met the cap, so 9,000 is taxable. Brock has not met the cap, so all 6,900 of his pay is taxable. Ruiz already met the cap, so 9,000 is taxable. Rudolph has not met the cap, so all 5,100 of his pay is taxable. If you do the math here to calculate what's taxable in total, you get 48000 So therefore, we'll come here to our SUDA tax for the year, 48000 And notice that our SUDA rate is 2.95%. So 48000 times 2.95% is $1,416. Okay? And that's how you calculate FUDA and SUDA.